Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is uh, probably one of the few sessions uh, where the chair is also not on site. So I apologize for that. My name is Geert Verdolag and I will be chairing this session on information geometry uh, in physics. And we have uh, four talks, uh, quite a wide variety of uh, uh, subjects. Uh, the first talk is going to be uh, delivered by Emmanuel Rouault and uh, from, from the Université de Technologie de Troyes and concerned the space-time thermomechanics for a material continuum. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, today uh, I wish to talk about uh, thermomechanics uh, for a material continuum uh, with some uh, geometrical considerations. I first wish to thank my co-authors, in particular uh, Richard Kerner, who is a specialist in geometry from uh, Sorbonne University. Okay. This is what I've done. Voilà. Bon. Voilà. <laughs> finite transformation of solids is a motivation for this talk. Uh, you can find finite transformation of solids in uh, forming processes, biomechanics, crash tests, explosions, basically every deformation where the initial shape of the object is very far from the final shape. For these uh, finite transformations, you need to derive constitutive models. Constitutive models uh, are the are equations that uh, translate the behavior, the physical behavior of the material. Um, and I wish to do that with thermodynamic considerations. And we make a, a proposition that is to say that the deforming material should see the same constitutive model as the observer in the laboratory. Now, this seems rather obvious, but it's, uh, it can bring to uh, rather difficult considerations when uh, the material uh, undergoes very large, large transformations. So basically, we wish to write equations that are invariant with respect to deforming observers. Deforming observers mean that uh, we, we consider a deformation in space and time. So we want to propose a covariant thermodynamics, covariant meaning invariant uh, with, uh, with respect to deforming observers. So uh, this uh, brings me to the outline of my talk. So I first will present some space-time and geometric considerations, then uh, develop the thermodynamics uh, context to give an example of a constitutive model mm -hmm. and end with um, space-time space finite element simulations. To, um, on, the physical, on the physics side, uh, I will uh, um, look at uh, the theory of relativity uh, to construct uh, the space-time formalism. And I propose to construct mechanics in between special relativity and general relativity, uh, where I want to take advantage of the Galilean and non-Galilean frames that uh, you find in general relativity uh, to use the covariance, meaning the invariance with respect to deforming observers. We consider the space with no curvature, meaning no coupling between uh, the momentum energy tensor and the metric. And this is similar to what you can find in special relativity. So basically our proposition is to construct mechanics inside the space-time context, because you will um, be free of the Galilean restriction that you have in traditional mechanics, meaning uh, in Newton's uh, mechanics, you have to write the equation in a particular framework, which is a Galilean frame. So the geometric context, we consider a four-dimensional differentiable manifold with an ambient metric of signature one minus one minus one minus one. This is very classical. We consider a point of the manifold that is an event with the local coordinates uh, here, 
um, label from zero to three, in fact, this is a mistake. Uh, we consider world lines and a tangent vector, which is the velocity on the world lines with a generalized length here defined with the metric. Now, what do we mean by covariance? Uh, the invariance with respect to deforming observers will be um, modeled using a fiber bundle structure mm -hmm. with a linear group uh, GL4R uh, to uh, consider this invariance. To model the deformation of the material, I present here uh, the transformation between two motions. This is a generalized definition for deformations. So we construct the first motion here, which is a reference motion. You have here a 2D material evolving in space. And the reference motion is an inertial mo motion, meaning that there is no motion of the material particle here, the motion takes place only in time. And we can consider two motions, here a rigid body motion, a translation, and here a deforming motion, where the shape here deforms in time. Now, to define a deformation tensor, we are going to compare the coordinates of this uh, motion here to the reference motion here, constructing a transformation between the two motions. Mm -hmm. So the reference motion is labeled with capital X and the uh, actual motion is labeled with a, a small X here. So we build a transformation and we take the uh, tangent application of this transformation to define a deformation tensor here. Now we also define a strain tensor, which is a comparison between the deformation tensor B here and the initial uh, metric defining the reference motion. We are going to use uh, several um, geometric tools uh, to define the constitutive model. We are going to use a projection on time, which is a contraction on the velocity, a projection on space, which for a vector is constructed with the difference between the vector itself and its projection on time. Um, Notation-wise, all the projection on space will be underlined. Now, of course, these two uh, definitions can be generalized to a tensor of higher orders. We are going to use two differentiation operators. One is a lead derivative in the velocity field, and the other one is a covariant derivative with a metric connection. In particular, we can define the acceleration using this covariant derivative. And the acceleration here is valid for any observer. No need to add correcting terms uh, like what you would have to do in classical mechanics. We finally define the rate of deformation as the lead derivative of the metric. And, um, it is equivalent to uh, the symmetric part of the velocity gradient, a traditional definition in mechanics. Now I will develop uh, some uh, thermodynamic considerations. And first I introduce the energy momentum tensor, um, which can be seen as a generalization, space-time generalization of the stress tensor. Each component of this tensor uh, have a dimension of energy uh, per unit uh, 3D volume, and it represents the flux of energy um, in different directions. We can decompose this uh, energy momentum tensor into three terms. Here is the second term. Uh, the three terms correspond to the projection and time, the projection and time on space, and the double projection and space. Now, the, each of these terms uh, can be interpreted physically. This the first term here is a scalar, uh, which can be interpreted as an energy term times the mass density. The second term Q uh, can be interpreted as the heat flux. And the last term T underlined, so the projection of space, can be identified with the stress tensor. 
Now, um, there is a principle of conservation that is translated as a divergence of T equals to zero, which we are going, of course, to use. The second principle that I want to um, look at is the second principle of thermodynamics, which is generalized uh, as a divergence of the entropy flux S is strictly positive or equal to zero. So S is the entropy flux, and we decompose this flux in time and space. Uh, and to, uh, we can uh, see that uh, a scalar eta appears, which we call the specific entropy. And we identify the projection on space with the heat flux, the projection of the momentum energy tensor, divided by the scalar, which is identified by the temperature. When you replace this decomposition here into the second principle of thermodynamics, you obtain these equations which relates the uh, ent specific entropy to the heat flux and the temperature. Now, uh, to um, derive uh, constitutive models, we wish to uh, write a closed use DM equation, which is a space-time generalization of the 3D closed use DM equation. To do that, we take the two principles that we just um, looked at, the second principle and the conservation of momentum energy, and we, differ we make the difference between these two terms to obtain this. Now, after some uh, mathematical derivation, you can obtain this equation where you have replaced T by its decomposition, S by its decomposition. You have used the mass conservation and define the free energy here, which is the difference between the internal energy and the uh, specific entropy here multiplied by the temperature. Now, this equation will replace the second principle. And of course, you have to verify the conservation of the uh, momentum energy tensor. Now, the advantage of this equation is that it relates the free energy to the stress tensor and the deformation tensor, which will enable to derive constitutive models. So this leads me to constitutive model derivation. So I consider the closed use DM inequality that was just derived, and I choose a specific form for the free energy, which is detailed here, to uh, obtain the constitutive model. So the form of the free energy that I choose corresponds to a reversible material. It is also isotropic. This is why I use here the invariance of the deformation tensor here, defined here. Now, we wish to construct a thermomechanical um, elastic material. So we also have here a free energy function of the temperature mm -hmm. and a coupling mechanical and temperature parameter here. Now, this energy is quadratic uh, to, to respect uh, the thermoelastic uh, consideration and reversible material that I wish to construct. Now, we take this free energy um, expression, replace it here, compute the lead derivative of these terms, and doing so, we will uh, see that the lead derivative of the strain tensor will appear, and we can demonstrate that the lead derivative of the strain tensor is equal to uh, the rate of deformation, in particular also, uh, the rate of deformation is a space special quantity, meaning that its space projected uh, value is equal to the rate of deformation itself. So we use this. After some derivation, we can show that uh, we can obtain these three equations, also considering, sorry, that we uh, have independent path in temperature and a rate of deformation. So we have three equations here, one for the heat, one for the specific entropy, and one for the stress tensor that is detailed here. Oops, sorry. So we obtain terms here for the thermomechanical uh, behavior of the material, 
linear terms here and nonlinear terms here. Now, the interest of this derivation is that we have uh, the advantage of this derivation is that we have been able to derive this uh, stress tensor from the clausius duem inequality without using any specific uh, frame and reference frames. Now, I illustrate this um, formalism with uh, the construction of space time finite element simulation. No. Okay. Okay. So very quickly then, uh, I construct uh, a weak form uh, for the conservation equation. So I will uh, go to the example here. Uh, after this weak form um, equation, we take the example of a plate here. So it is a two D plate in plain stress made of aluminium, and we impose a displacement and or a temperature here. Now we mesh the structure in space because it's 2D and time, this is the direction here. So with an unstructured mesh and time step that depends and are defined on each for each element. Now I will um, present some results. Here only the mechanical um, uh, displacement is imposed and you see that the temperature is constant and you can compare the stress to an analytical solution, existing analytical solution here in green, the analytical solution in red, the uh, simulation to see that uh, the um, results um, are uh, coherent with the existing solutions. Now, we can do a prediction when we impose both temperature and displacement and uh, look at the different solutions. In particular, we have uh, the information for the heat flux and the internal energy inside the solution. So as a conclusion, we have built a covariant thermodynamic to derive constitutive models. The advantage is that there is no need to consider uh, specific material configuration for this derivation. And we have constructed space-time finite elements with two advantages. A time increment can be uh, associated to each element and we solve automatically the conservation of energy. Now the perspective is to uh, construct uh, such a model with dissipative effects. I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions? I don't see questions on the chat, but yeah, there is one from Predo. There is one question from Predo. Uh, yes, please. Yeah, on slide 11. Okay. Uh, uh, slide 11, sorry. Okay. On slide 11, does the solution to the RIHS necessarily follow the second law and conservation in the LHS? It doesn't appear to be a reversible argument. Um, RHS means right hand side and LHS left hand side. Sorry. Thank you. That's uh, the solution of the right hand side. I don't understand. On the right hand side, the left hand side. And LHS, okay. Could you? Uh, yes. Uh, sorry. You, 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 you mind if I ask like here? <laughs> yes, yeah, yes, yeah, please, yeah. because I don't understand. So on top, on top. On top. Yeah. You have your second law of thermodynamics and your conservation of, uh, of uh, energy momentum. Yes. Implies, yeah. implies your right side. No, it doesn't imply. It's just that I make the difference between the two terms here to obtain this. Yes, but yes. This, this equation has to be verified with the conservation of momentum. Yeah, this, that argument is not reversible. Like you cannot say that obeying the equation this, on the right. Yeah. No, no. You have to yes. add the conservation of uh, energy momentum here. Thank you. Here? That was a question. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we, we have one question in the room B, please. Yeah, I'm just curious about 
you know, my uh, theoretician of chemistry, which is quite hard to define in a covalent way. So when you define your covalent energy, maybe one side. Yes. Here. Yeah. So it seems that the entropy, the temperature is part of the definition of the entropy. So is it coming from a Okay. Uh, no, basically, this is an hypothesis. You can decompose the entropy between the, uh, this is more mathematics, you project on time and space, and then you make the hypothesis that this uh, space projection is equal to this term. So that's an hypothesis. So it, this is already something which is not dimensional. Oh, an entropy, I cannot hear you. Okay. Yes, it's a, it's a temperature and the heat flux. And then when you take the covalent data to the next slide, it seems that the temperature is out of this covalent data. No, here you take the heat here. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's not clear to me. The derivation, you mean? We can. We can uh, look at the derivation, the math, if you, if you wish. But you take the, uh, the derivation of this, and here you, you take the, just the derivation of the product here. Uh, the, we can discuss the hypothesis here, if you wish. Okay. 